Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Joey Evans. And I'm Roy Kennedy. Today we're taking a look at The Last Kingdom board game. Mm. Now, this game uh, is a based on the Netflix, I guess it was originally BBC or something, uh, show about um, medieval England or somewhere in that time frame yeah. with a very famous hero, King Alfred, who's not quite as heroic in this particular show, and then a bunch of other historical people, but a lot of made-up people, too. I've watched a season of it, and it's a typical show where pretty much everyone betrays everyone, and lots of people die, and there's cool battle scenes once in a while, if the budget thus allows. Right. This came to our attention for two reasons. One, it's from Game One Games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who normally makes tiny epic games. Mm -hmm. uh, their one non-tiny epic game really is... Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. Yeah. It's a good one. Also, this is not Scott Alms. It is oh. not Scott Alms. This is John DeClaire. Yes. Which is, he's one of my favorite designers. Um, I heard about that on a list recently. <laughs> or his favorite designer. <laughs> you all, spoilery. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the IP and did not resonate with a lot of people. No. I mean, they'll be like, based on a super popular series. I had never heard of this. <laughs> right, and yet... If, and I know the series is popular, and some of you are watching probably mm -hmm. love it, and that's fantastic. But I definitely have said in groups, The Last Kingdom board game, and the majority of people were like, huh? Mm -hmm. So it can't be, it's not like Game of Thrones. Right. Even though I still suspect Game of Thrones was his thought pass process when he designed it. Oh, I'm this. sure. This was on Kickstarter and did not do particularly well. It did okay. Mm. Especially for gambling. Gambling games are usually... Way up there in Kickstarter, they do very well normally. So. I think that's the IP that people weren't as excited. Well, about. maybe it's the gameplay, Ooh. which I'm about to show you. In this game, you're going to have the Danes are fighting the Saxons, which are split into three groups: the West, Sa West Saxons, the Mercians, and the North Umbrians. Each person is going to take a character. So this character here. It gives you an initiative order here. It tells you what their initial affiliation is. So Ragnar the Younger here is associated with the Danes. It gives you some starting action tokens, and it gives you a starting affinity. So you can see that Ragnar starts with a three on the Danes, a zero with the West Saxons, and then a one with the Mercians and Northumbrians. So even though he starts with the Danes, he has a little bit of influence with these, and that can change as time goes by. He also has a cost, costs two action tokens to move him. He has a special ability. He can lose two affinity of any type and gain one of another type. So maybe on his turn, he could lose two here and gain one here and go up. And he also has a permanent special ability. The game takes place over two rounds. And in each of those rounds, the first part, players are going to take the deck of cards that corresponds to that. Each player is going to get a handful of cards. They're going to draft these cards. You'll take one keep that card, pass the rest of the left, and you'll keep going till everyone has four cards. Well, technically, they have four cards, plus they'll start with two cards. So here's Ragnar the Young's two cards that they start with. Now, some cards, when you take them, give you an immediate benefit. Like, for example, if I took this card, it gives me one action token, and it gives me one affinity for the West Saxons over here. Uh, this one here gives me an action token, and makes me, I get an affinity of my choice, um, the one that I have the least of. Sometimes they are going to be immediate effects like that, but most of the, and sometimes they give you special abilities that will stay in front of you, but most of them are action cards. At that time, in initiative order, you're gonna pick a territory that's going to be fought over. Whoever has the lowest initiative is gonna pick it, and it's gonna take turns. There's five different territories, on the board, one, two, three, four, five, and you're gonna fight in each of these territories. So let's say we're fighting here in Wales. Wales has one Dane, and then has different armies of the other ones, which would be four, so it's four to one. Now, if some of the characters in the game, some of the people playing the game, have their heroes in these spots, so for example, if my hero was in this spot, I'm gonna add one to the side that I'm on and the game comes with rings so you can keep track. So let's say we had a Dane hero here in this area. So right now it's two to four. This is kept track of at the bottom of the board to see the current strength of each side. And then in turn order, players can play actions or pass. Once everyone has passed, you will see who won the battle. 
and then there will be peace in that land. And you'll put it on the side that has one, whichever side it is. After there's peace has been made in a land, each player is going to get points based on if they're on the winning side, because that will be based on your current affinity, whatever it might be. So let's say that the, let's say somehow the Danes win this one. And we look and there is one, two for me. And so I'm going to come over here and look at the number of armies that are on the winning side and look at my current affinity, which is one, and I would just get two points. The higher you get your affinity, the more points you have if you're on the winning side. The losing side does not get points, they get more action tokens. Players are going to be taking turns in, on, in each battle, playing cards from their hand, like this one here lets me move three Dane armies from one region to any other region. So maybe I play that card and boom, now the battle has changed dramatically. Here, move one to an adjacent region, then you can remove up to one of each of the other types. But the other player might say, oh, I'm going to add this to a region. I'm also going to take three victory points if it has the most. So there's going to be various cards that players will be playing, including their two special cards, which they will have access to both rounds. Players will also have access to the market action. This is what one of the main things you'll use your action tokens for. You use them on your turn to move your character, but you can also use them to basically pick one of these actions and take it. So maybe I want to take this action, which adds two Saxons to any region. So I take that, I pay three of my action tokens, and then it moves up here, decreasing the cost of other ones and making the cost of using it again. This one lets you switch your affinity. This lets you, so I can be, if I'm, I, I'm like, hmm, you know what, my side's losing, I'm gonna switch to the other side. This one lets you add affinity. This lets you draw three level two cards and keep, keep one and you can play one immediately. Add three armies to three different areas. Kill two units, get two victory points, and move stuff. So these are always available for players, but you do have a limited number of action tokens. After players are done resolving that battle, you'll go to the next battle and resolve it. And the first person to pass will have a chance to decide what battle happens next. We have different tokens that are used to show what the current battle is at any given point, and you'll also know what the next battle is going to be. And there's a lot more rules involved in the game, but after this first round, after everyone has, you've done all five battles, and remember, the cards you draft have to last for all five battles, then you go to a, another round, draft cards, and do the same thing. There's more things that can happen in each of the decks. There are hero cards that you can get who are they're actually taken out of the game. If you're playing with one of these people as, you know, here's Ragnar the Younger. So if I'm playing with him as my main character, he's not in the game. But you, if I'm not playing with him, he, there's a possibility that he'll come up and be a hero with a special ability if I'm the person to play him. And so there's various things that are going to be involved. There's cards that give you points for different things. Your special abilities give you points. Everyone has special characters like King Alfred. Can't switch from one side to the other. And you just keep playing until after two rounds. Whoever has the most points is the winner. The Last Kingdom board game is a game that's... The main thing here is kind of... Not negotiating is a strong word, but... No. There's a bit of... Backstabbing? You're trying to, like, determine what the other players are going to do or how they're going to kind of interact with the area control in the game. The interplay is strong. It's very interesting. It uh, it, it's So when you play a four-player game, it's usually best, and they have, like, four they have four people they tell you to use in your mm -hmm. first game, and they have two Saxons and two non-Saxons, but you could start with four or three and one or whatever, and that's not going to work, right? Because if mm -hmm. we're all Saxons then the Saxons are going to win almost every battle. Right. But I don't want that because if we all do that, so I should switch sides. Saying, I want the Saxons to win every battle, but I want the Saxons that I'm allied with to be just a little bit better than the Saxons you're allied with. And that's true. It does look like the balance looks off when you look at that track. You've got the one and then mm -hmm. you've got the three that all come together. And then, like, King Alfred just can't switch. Yeah. Right? He just can't. He can. I think there might be a Dane who can't switch either. There's a lot of characters in this there game. Are. And they all have very different feels as to how mm -hmm. they play and the interplay between them. And I think one thing I think is really cool is a character can be a hero in a game that, that you're not playing that character. Mm -hmm. I like that a yeah, lot. I agree. Like King Alfred might show up if you're not. I don't know if King Alfred can, but a lot of the characters can. Uh huh. The, but it has this economy of what you do. 
Mm -hmm. you draft, and I love drafting. Mm -hmm. Right. You draft, and then you get these cards, and you have four cards plus your two, and you have six cards. And then you have a certain number of action points based on your thing that you get each round. And then you need to make that last for five battles. So the, we start, and I'm like, oh, play card, play card, play card, play card. Okay, okay. who we won the battle? And then the next battle, I'm like, I got nothing. This is this is like a constant game of sizing up your opponents and being like, where are they going to focus? Where are they going to try to put people? And you see people playing cards and seeing how things are shifting. And as people are losing battles, they're getting more action points. So you know they're going to be able to do something bombastic in the future because they, oh man, they have a ton of action points back there. They're going to use those as well to kind of manipulate the board. But then it throws it on its head because a constant mechanic in this game is switching sides. So you can be like, yep. I'm going to make sure this side is winning these battles. And then you're forcing, like prepping for the future to make the other side win these battles. And then they're like, but now I flip sides and now I'm making, I'm with you, I'm with you now. Like we want these guys to win. And it's this interesting back and forth. And it's really about racing up the tracks with the alliance with those characters to figure out how to maximize your points in those different area controls. It's very intriguing, like how the game works and the mind games that you kind of play as the game goes along. I do like that a lot, especially when you're you're battling, you know, for that superiority in a certain region mm -hmm. and you're one versus three and you're like, you know what, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. And all of a sudden, you as the one, you've, you've won. You know, you're right there towards the end, everybody's spent, and then the one person on the three flips and is like, hey, I'm on your side. And you're like, there is... No way I want to share this victory with you. Yeah. But that is a really fun thing. I also like the push and pull of the market. Yeah. You know, because you're saving those action points because you see something you need. But as soon as somebody grabs it or something else, everything shifts. And the entire thing, you're like, okay, you've just got to you've got to reposition everything in your mind. Right. It's I a like game. That. It's another game where you're very much constantly, like, on your toes. It's very tactical. and It's strategic in some ways of trying to set up that stuff, but it's also very tactical being like, okay, what's my opponent going to do? They took yeah. that card, they moved it to the back, but that moves this card, that I, this, this market thing that I want up further. Do I take it now or do I wait? Because if it moves one further, it'll be one action point cheaper. And that could be huge when, when you're trying to see the multiples. It's like, if I can do three, three times, you know? And then sometimes you're just like, I want to lose a battle so I can get the action points. So that way, next battle I can like make it happen. It's it's a very interesting game of like tug and pull with all the different ways that the cards go together. And maybe sometimes just like, oh, let me draw three more cards because those cards you get, it's like, boom, this card basically shifts the tide of the game, you know? And you get like any area control, when they start pulling people from other regions, then you start thinking ahead. You're like, okay, you just pull those guys out of that so mm -hmm. you put them back in there. It's like, maybe I will throw this to get over there. I like that. It's, it's It gives you a Blood Rage style feel, and there are going to be comparisons to that, I mm. think. It feels like it's in that family of Blood Rage and and uh, Rising Sun. It does. Things like that. But, and this is a negative here against the game, the look of the game. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. so... I think, you said at the very beginning, you thought the IP hurts it. I think the IP hurts it a lot. I do mm. too. I think tons of people are going to walk right by this game and not touch it. And I yes, agree. you have a lot of people who like The Last Kingdom, but the Venn di you don't want the Venn diagram of people buying your game to be people who like Last Kingdom. You want it to be people who are interested in Last Kingdom, but also who like good games. And I think a lot of people are going to walk by this. And the game itself, I think the map looks fine. I think the miniatures are okay, although they're not particularly easy to tell apart. Mm. But the screenshots and the graphic design, it's a little ugly of a game. And I think that's going to hurt it a lot, actually. I've never seen the show, but some of the screenshots look like a church play. Mm. I mean, I don't know. It's like the little crown it's, and stuff. It's really hard to do screenshots well. Like, it is. It's almost, it's almost nigh impossible to do screenshots well. So it's, it's interesting. I guess you have to like stylize them a little bit to make them work. But yeah, I get that feeling, that vibe. I'm, I'm sure the powers and the characters and stuff are terribly thematic if you know the show, right. but I know none of it. I've never watched a single episode. I, I enjoy the game, but it's like, oh, why is my character, my character, uh, my character can't, like every time he flips sides, he'll flip back at the end of the round. Why does that happen? I'm sure it makes perfect sense when you've seen the show. It's like, that's what the guy does. It makes sense. But me coming into the game because the IP, I have no idea about it. Like, I'm just kind of like, cool, I'm, I'm sure this makes sense somehow, yeah. you know? But gameplay-wise, it's fantastic. I mean, I'll go out to say if it had a different cover, different IP, I, I, I think I think it would be a much more well-known game because well, the, the the strategy is great. I wouldn't have brought this to the table if it wasn't for the designer. Right. That's exactly um, right. I was like, yeah, we'll get around to it. Um, the game is a the gameplay. There's also you should note that it is a little fragile. It 
requires everybody to play their best. I, I don't know how to explain it. Oh. But if three people decide to team up and one person is by themselves and there's a person sitting there going, I, it would make sense for them to switch sides, but they don't. And so they're just helping the one team win. But it's not going to make them win. It's just going to make Joey. Like with me and Joey, we're always teaming up together. Yeah. And right. I got like three points and he got six. And I got three points and he got six. I, and you're like, hey, Tom, you should switch sides. Or, be or for you. at least make it so, you know, the, the people you're aligned with, you're getting more points than your opponent. This is a game, because all of the points are hidden, there's a very interesting thing. Like I'm very cognizant when we play games that like who has what points and where it's going. Yeah. And like it's like I need, like if we're both winning the battle, and you're gaining 10 points, I need to be getting more than 10 points, or at least 10 points, or else I'm losing, you know, even though we're on the same sides. And there's a lot of things in this game that allow you to manipulate that. It's like, during the last round, like, my side lost the first battle, but we won every single other battle. And I was winning every single other battle. I was switching, like, the, just like the, um, what, the Saxons or whatever. I was switching out certain Saxons for other Saxons for plays. Like I wasn't even trying to like make my side overwhelmingly win, but I was trying to put the people in that I got more points than the other person that was winning those battles was. Yeah. And so that you can manipulate the board to try to figure out how to get maximize your points over the person who's your teammate. No one's your teammate. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Right, I'm know. saying that if me and Joey are constantly right. if, teammates. If people aren't paying attention. And I am, well, I, I know, but it's easy. I could be like, I'm feeling good. I'm winning lots of battles. Yes, but Joey's winning more. And then that affects you. Right, yeah. Right. And so everyone needs to be there. And that's why I call the game fragile, because you mm -hmm. can be a good player, but you might lose because there's a bad player. Not every game has that in it. Right. And you should be trying to throw points to whoever you currently think is losing. It's like, okay, I they're, agree. they're yeah. losing, but it's really hard. All the points are hidden. So there's a little bit of a memory aspect there of like, I've seen them win a lot. I've seen them grab a lot of points. Okay, well, maybe I don't need to be helping them get any more, you know? <laughs> right. There's a few cheesy ways to get points. There are. There are. Um, There's plenty right. of cheesy ways to get points in this game, which is, <laughs> which is good. I like that, too. I'm going to get my rating first here. For me, this is an 8. Mm. It's really close. I would have given it an 8.5 because I love the gameplay a lot, but the production brings it down a little. And I'm not even saying necessarily that Game One Games had a bad production, but it just feels like a huge missed opportunity. I want to see this game reprinted in a Blood Rage box with amazing artwork and cool components, and I think it could be a really big deal. I mm. really do. I think there's going to be a lot of people who love this game who are going to pass by it because of the theming. Mm. I really, I know that already. I had to talk you and Ron and other people into playing it. I was like, oh, you, you guys will like it. That's and I shouldn't have to do that if mm. it had like the artwork of Blood Rage. You've been like, okay, I'm in. Right. Um, so that's why it's an A. It's, it's almost there. I like it a lot, but that keeps it from being great for me. Mm. What about you? I'm going to say it's an 8 for me as well. I really enjoyed the gameplay. I really enjoyed the dynamic of trying to outthink your opponent. But once again, I have no connection to the theme or the IP at all. I like fantasy stuff, but I guess this is Vikings and Saxons. It's more like I'm medieval like, than fantasy. Like medieval. I, I normally like more mystical, crazy stuff in my, my fantasy. So it's not really fantasy. But, um, but yeah, so... I didn't have that connection, but the gameplay and the mechanics of it were so solid, and I really enjoy that stuff. I just love area control games, and this has an interesting twist on the flipping sides constantly, which was really cool. I agree. I'm actually coming in at 8 as well. And that's the thing. I'm right there next to 8.5, but what keeps me, the artwork and all that, mm. and, the, and the fact that I don't care about the IP at all. If this was released as just a... Whatever, like a straight medieval game. Straight medieval game. I might like it more. I just think I like funny. it more. And, I, and I, you know what? When I started playing it, I, I got those Blood Rage vibes. I even mentioned it at the table, mm -hmm. and people were like, shut your mouth. But then afterwards, people were like, yeah, I see it. It makes I sense, mean, yeah. Blood Rage has monsters. That's I think the it's a little thing. Game of Thrones and how it feels, too. Oh, it for sure. People Game switching sides. Yeah, but anyway, I love, I love the play of it. I love the affinity track. I love the market. There's so much to unpack in this, and it's a great, it's a great design game, even if you don't like the IP. Give it a try. I think you'd be very surprised. Well, there you go, folks. That's The Last Kingdom. The board game. On the next one, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Joy Evans. And I'm Roy Kennedy. And we're all Saxons. <gasps> nope, oh, I flipped. Or, or I'm not. Uh, Dang it.